in, in May, but before you go, and, 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 and Councillor Montan wants to say a few words. First of all, I'd like to thank the, uh, the Landscape Architects uh, MBTW group. Uh, as you can tell, uh, this is not a simple park design, but none of the park designs are simple. Uh, in order to meet the needs and to satisfy every single stakeholder and neighbor and resident in the area, um, you know, this is a lot of listening. And as you can tell, we've already had a number of working group meetings prior to uh, coming out to the community. And, um, you know, a politician once told me that uh, the, the mayoral winner of 2014 will be the, uh, the gentleman or the lady who can resolve the conflict between children and dogs. Um, ironically, neither one of those uh, uh, camps vote. Uh, but, but nevertheless, I've, I've been told they will, they will uh, determine the outcome of our, our next mayoral campaign. But, uh, you know, really I, I think that, you know, your, your feedback and, and contributions tonight are invaluable. And as you can tell, there's a number of conflicting points of interest. And uh, I want to just sort of, before, you know, closing up the remarks, I want to get a sense of, was it concept number one that you liked more than concept number two? Because I want to see a show of hands for those who like concept number one. So that's pretty much the majority of the room. Concept number two. <laughs> okay, so so I think that gives um, our landscape architects some pretty clear direction that we're heading towards number one with some hybrid models of based on the comments coming back. Now, this park will only work um, through a couple of interventions. Number one is that you've acknowledged you you've now. Um, I think uh, we've given you some information that the ownership is, is a little bit complicated. There are a number of abutting neighbors. You may be living in one of those towers, you may be working in one of those towers, you may actually be a principal or a shareholder in one of those corporations that own one of those office towers. It only works when we work together. There are other parks in our ward that have been adopted that become a, a they become stewards of the park. So ironically enough, with all this very sophisticated ownership around the park, we don't have a Friends of College Park yet. So as we move through the design, and as we talk about the maintenance of the park, it will probably be very worthwhile to you, knowing that when the city invests $3 million into the neighborhood, you're going to want to see this maintained well. So that might be a conversation that the neighborhood should start to think about uh, in, in the long run, because it will need a champion. You'll need to be stewards of your own park. Your real estate value and assets will go up based on the fact that you are budding, not an unattractive city park or just an average city park, but you'll be abutting an excellent city park. For those property owners, or those who can influence their property owners, if you actually happen to have abutting real estate to the park and you haven't been taking care of the edges of the park, you're part of the solution as well, if I can just put that out there. Because the city can't do it by itself. And the city may or may not do a land swap with or without you know, the, the property owners. And if that doesn't take place, for whatever reason, if I can't control that, city real estate can't control that, does that mean we only improve the edges that the city owns and not the edges that those property owners own? Right? You see how this conversation works? It only works when we do this together. So if you have any sway with your property owners, if you have any sway with your landlords or your condominium corporations, it's about getting involved with this asset. Um, and then finally, if I can just say, you know, I'm a little bit disappointed that uh, Candarell has uh, allowed Bath & Beyond to put up a sign uh, illuminating the park. It's not in great shape right now. It's been a partial, partially it's been occupied as a construction staging area. But, you know, they're also part of the solution. Candarell has, is paying for uh, this park through their second, Section 37 and 45 contributions. Um, you know, we may not have enough money to do everything that we, we need. But urban parks are such that you have 20,000, 30,000 people living in the vicinity, all putting a lot of pressure on three quarters of an acre of land with fractured ownership and, and abutments. And so if that is the case and we need to go back for a little bit more, maybe we can come up with a, a formula that will work. 
Um, but you know, with respect to the sign that's actually illuminating the park right now, um, I wrote a letter. I'm objecting to that sign. The sign was put up, unfortunately, without approvals right now. If it can come down, that would be great. Because I think that if we're going to put that much time and energy into design of a park, then we should make it at least beautiful. And we should treat it at the front of the house, not just the back of the house. Um, so we'll stay behind and take whatever comments are, are still coming forward. I'd like to thank the Delta Chelsea for once again being our host. I'd also like to thank the parks uh, staff who are here today. They've been fantastic. As you can tell, every single park in, in, in that's going through design in War 27, there's a number of them, uh, each and every single one of them requires a lot of work. And uh, the work is not just the maintenance afterwards, but it's also about design and listening to the community beforehand. So your contributions were extremely valuable tonight. Um, you have a very eager hand up. Huh? Very good question. Yes. I'm sure that you can undertake that campaign. I, I wouldn't object to it. Right now, mine my, my, my might be the lonely voice out there. A quick idea, Kristen? Sure. I sure. think everyone in the neighborhood just received a mailing today from Bed Bath & Beyond that has a coupon that you can cut out and bring into the store. Cut it out, bring it in, and say, I won't shop here until you take down the sign. Mm -hmm. So this is a neighborhood of action. Um, there's, there's more hands. I'm trying to wrap up the meeting so you can go. Is it? Uh, Okay, three three last comments. Go ahead. Yes. Well, there was. Uh, um, sure. Why why is there only three million dollars for the um, the park? I can tell you that there was $2 million secured through the Section 37 agreement for the Canderell application, an additional million dollars afterwards uh, for the, the extra five stories that went up. Um, that is the available funds that is uh, attached to this park uh, when I walked into the office. So uh, that's, that's why it is what it is. You know, we pay a lot of property taxes, absolutely, but you're also getting a number of city services and we have to share it uh, quite uh, quite liberally across the GTA. We've got crumbling infrastructure. You've got a transit system that's over capacity. You know, we've got sidewalks that are very narrow, not in great shape. You know, I know that the downtown the NBI works hard to try to improve their edges where they can. Um, this will not be a, a situation that's going to be solved just because the city steps in, um, because it's almost like whack-a-mole. It's like we, we take care of one piece, before I know it, there's another piece that seems to require work. It really is a collaboration between community and the city, as well as our private partners. And in this case, you actually have a very sophisticated group of owners uh, and, uh, and neighbors. So this is why I say, uh, you know, considering who is actually uh, in the room, and considering who is not in the room but actually has a stake in the area, um, this is a, a great park that deserves to have a Friends of College Park uh, adoption crew. Um, and, uh, and I think that you can do it. And we'll help you set it up.